about 200 years ago, a French mathematician by the name of Joseph Fourier said he could define any shape in terms of circles. In other words, a variety of circles could be combined to make any shape, or conversely, any shape could be broken down into the circles which define it. It was a couple of decades, though, before other mathematicians accepted his idea. The math behind this process is called, surprise, the Fourier transform. In 1964, J.W. Cooley and John Tukey simplified the math, making it faster, and it became the fast Fourier transform, or FFT. What's amazing to me is that this relationship was recognized about 200 years ago, when there were no computers or internet, no television or radio. There wasn't even electricity. While Monsieur Fourier's math defined the circles from which a shape is made, it can also do the reverse, or combine circles to form a shape. Here we're seeing the combining of circles to form... Homer Simpson? To us involved in amateur radio, the FFT makes those informative spectrum displays possible. Elad even mentions the FFT resolution of the spectrum displays in their SDR software. For all of us, the MPEG and JPEG compression make digital video and audio more manageable for recording or for transmission over the air or on the web. The FFT is also used in medical imaging, GPS, and much more. It helps us solve problems by observing them from a completely different perspective. Not just a different physical perspective, but a different logical perspective. So, must we understand the math to know what's going on? Just stay tuned and see what you think. Monsieur Fourier's original idea was that any shape is a combination of circles. To transfer this idea over to waveforms, let's see how the sine wave is derived from a circle. The sine, S-I-N-E, of trigonometry fame is this distance defined by this angle. If we rotate one arm of the angle, we form a circle. If we plot the sine of that angle against time, we create a sine wave. Thus, as circles are the building blocks of shapes, sine waves are the building blocks of waveforms. The real magic begins when we combine different sine waves. Here we see a single circle, and how a single sine wave of a particular frequency is derived from that circle. Let's add another circle, creating another sine wave at twice the frequency. With both present, we see a waveform that is definitely not a sine wave. We can see, though, that each by itself is a sine wave, but when combined, produce something entirely different. Here we can observe the results of combining a particular frequency with twice that frequency, three times that frequency, four times, five times, six times, seven times, and eight times the basic frequency on the left. These are all harmonics of that frequency. While here we see only through the eighth harmonic, the FFT can deal with many thousands of harmonics. Combining just these eight frequencies, though, demonstrates how various waveforms can be created. We can independently change the magnitude and the phase of each circle and see how it contributes to the overall waveform. Remember, each circle by itself produces only a sine wave. You may have heard that a square wave is a combination of a sine wave and its odd harmonics. While some higher harmonics would square off the corners and smooth the top and bottom, it's easy to see the square wave taking shape with just the third, fifth, and seventh harmonics. There are several other recognizable waveforms programmed into the software, like a sawtooth or triangle. The pulse waveform is particularly interesting to me. Notice that all the circles are at maximum level and that the phase control of each circle is pointing upward. Even though they are on different frequency, they all coincide in the positive direction, creating a positive pulse. 
If I change the phase of all the circles by 90 degrees, the pulse is now centered at another 90 degrees and it becomes a negative pulse. There's a randomized feature as well, creating random waveforms, and you can play with each of the different frequency circles. We have just seen how sine waves combine to create waveforms, but the Fourier transform itself starts with the shape, or in this case, the complex waveform. The waveform exists, but the sine waves and hence the circles which define it are unknown. The math evaluates the undulations of the complex waveform and determines the sine waves that contribute to it. One can describe the Fourier transform as converting the time domain to the frequency domain. A waveform occurring over time contains a certain level and phase of particular frequencies. If we define the waveform as it occurs in time, we refer to the time domain. This is what we observe on an oscilloscope. Once we perform a Fourier transform, we know which frequencies contribute to that waveform, in other words, the frequency domain. Turns out that it requires much less data to define a waveform using the frequency domain than the time domain. We only need to specify the frequencies present, their amplitude, and perhaps phase. This is the foundation of picture, video, and audio compression techniques such as JPEG and MPEG. For us hams, think of this. An antenna connected to a radio receiver collects a variety of waveforms from different stations, combining them into one very complex waveform. Using only mathematics, today's software-defined receiver can create a spectrum display and tune several stations simultaneously. This is all done with mathematics and with much better precision than the traditional electronic components previously used. Prices of the processors needed to accomplish this are dropping as well. Better and cheaper. That's a winning combination. Hopefully by now you have a little better understanding of the FFT. And we did it all with no mention of mathematics. Well, maybe a little trigonometry. I was inspired by this website and by several links there. There are some animations and an introduction to the math. If you wish to expand the math, there are some nice free courses at Khan Academy. If you're really ambitious, Mr. Khan also offers some computer programming courses. Once you've mastered all that, you could read a free book by Dr. Stephen W. Smith on digital signal processing, or DSP. You could gain a little insight into the inner workings of software-defined radios with free GNU radio, allowing you to connect blocks written in C++ using wires written in Python to create a software radio. These are only examples. There is much more. With so much free quality educational material out there, you could give yourself a pretty good free education. You just won't get a piece of paper. I hope I've improved your understanding of the FFT and maybe offered a little encouragement. Thanks for watching.